Good afternoon. It's Dr. Kremens talking to you here from my, my office on campus. I don't have all my new posters up. I haven't had a chance to do that since we've been back this week, uh, but I'm planning to do that, although I still have my nice Spider-Man and Hulk stuff back there. Uh, so first of all, thanks for those of you that emailed me yesterday telling me that you weren't able to come to campus because of the weather. Thanks to those of you who were able to come. Uh, as you probably noticed from the update that I posted last night, uh, a lot of people were not able to make it to campus yesterday because of the weather. And as I've, as I've said before, and as I mentioned in my update a couple of days ago, if we have any other storms like that, where driving conditions where you're living are dangerous, and, and even, you know, my commute in from the city yesterday morning was, was not great. I've had worse, but I've had a lot better, and I was actually really surprised that, uh, it, that we did have morning classes. Um, but going forward, if we do have another snowstorm like that, where I think one of the issues was that there was more so, snow in certain parts of the Chicago area than others. I know Northwest Indiana got got hit pretty hard last night. Um, but if we get another storm like that where uh, we don't cancel campus uh, classes, uh, don't come. If you don't feel safe and you don't feel safe driving to campus, stay home, stay safe, and then email me. I'll get you the notes. I'll do another video like this um, to catch everybody up. Uh, and I, again, I'm always happy to take questions. So after you watch this video and you read the notes I'm going to put on Blackboard uh, after I post this, please let me know. I'm happy to help. I'm happy to read drafts, especially. So again, I'm just going to focus in this video on what I'd hope to cover in class, which I did, you know, with, with the folks that were able to, to, uh, to come. Um, but this is really the outline for paper number two. So I'm going to go through this. And what I want to mention um, I'm going to do a screen share in a second with um, some of the resources that are on Blackboard for this paper. It's, and I'm also going to show you the, the outline structure, which I've typed up and I'll post up on the announcement section. Uh, one thing I should mention is the structure for paper number two, the basic outline for it, is going to be the same basic structure we're going to use also for paper three, paper four, paper five. So this is a very standard academic structure. Most of your college papers will pretty much follow this, especially papers like this one that are using any kind of outside sources. So this is the first paper we're doing where you're using outside so an outside source, just one in this case, uh, and you're using quotations. We didn't do that in paper number one, as you know, since we were just doing that narrative paper about the map. Um, so I'm just gonna give you some suggestions. Of course, if, if you have any questions that you want me to answer directly, I will be happy to do a Zoom meeting with you uh, before our next class. If you wanna meet with me over Zoom, um, I'm happy to do that. Just send me an email, especially if you're, you're starting to work on the paper and you need help on it or you need some suggestions, you wanna brainstorm a topic, I'm happy to help you out and work with you on that. So let me do my screen share. Like I said, I'm gonna go into Blackboard first and just show you where the resources are. So you know, make sure the directions are here as always under readings, writing assignments and quizzes. But all of the sources for this paper that you have to choose from, you're only selecting one of them, are listed here. They're linked. That's Megan Kirby, the McNamara, Clough, Galbraith, Heller, and then two articles that I'd written on, on Porcelino. Very briefly, I want to just mention what is in these. Um, but let me show you the directions again for the paper first so that you know what question you're answering. And then I'll show you the, the suggested outline. So let me switch over here to my, uh, my directions. Top of this is the usual stuff. So, you know, when we're back in class again, I'll go through all the formatting, the Google Docs stuff, you know, the, the fonts, but that's all fairly self-explanatory. And, and you all did a great job with that, with paper number one, and I, I, I uh, appreciate that. So here's the prompt. You can read it over on your own, but the main question that you're answering for this paper as part of your thesis is this one. What did you think of Porcelino's book? And what did you learn from reading these additional research sources about him. So you see, you got a lot of freedom with this paper, but I, I do want you to base your opinion of the book on the research and reading you're doing in one, at least one of these articles. And I say one, because I, I have had students in the past that use maybe two of the articles, but it's only a three page paper. We're still early in the semester. So you, wanna, you don't wanna get overwhelmed with too much source material. So you're trying to answer that question. You know, what do you think of the book? And you know, based on this little bit of research you've done on him and based also on our class notes, um, how does that research support your idea? How does it connect in? And I'll give you some examples of that in a minute when I, when I give you the, uh, the, the uh, outline. But even if you go back and look at the sources, let me briefly show you what each one of these interviews or articles focuses on. And again, this is back in Blackboard in that folder. I've tried to do these roughly in chronological order uh, with the most recent first. The two articles at the ends are kind of an exception because they're more academic articles, so they're a little bit different than these other ones. Uh, but anyway, 
The Megan Kirby article is the most recent one. Great article if you want to, in your paper, write about his Midwestern roots, those Chicago roots. That article from last year, this Megan Kirby one, is very much about him being a Chicagoan, you know, from the Northwest suburbs of the city, those kind of Midwestern roots. That article also has a very good analysis of that Belmont Harbor chapter at the beginning of the book. So I've had students in the past who, you know, use that article uh, from last spring. It's the first time it was published, but some students used it and, you know, agreed or disagree with Megan Kirby's analysis of the chapter. So that there's a lot of interesting stuff in that one. And because it's the most recent article, there's just a lot of interesting material to think about in it. Uh, and again, you don't have to read every word of every one of these articles. The, your goal as a, as a researcher, as a, as a detective really, is to find the idea, you know, you, these, are, these are all hyperlinks except for the last two, so you can do a word search in your browser. If there's a particular phrase you're looking for, like, you know, depression or anxiety or punk rock or whatever, you know, art, studio art, you can search for the idea you're writing about. So give you another example, the Nathan Scott McNamara article from 2018 is really more about Porcelino's dad. It's more about his family. If you wanted to write a paper talking about his relationship with his family in the book and what you thought of it. Um, but it also talks a little bit about him as an entrepreneur because he did start his own publishing imprint. He started his own record label. He still owns his own distribution business which distributes other people's books and comics and magazines. So uh, the McNamara is a really interesting article. You know, if you yourself are going into business and you want to write more about this, this, uh, you know, guy from Hoffman Estates who started his own small publishing business, then that's a really interesting article. And it might show you how he got out of that depression, got out of that anxiety, was able to manage it in such a way that he had the confidence to start something like that. So it's an interesting, uh, fairly recent article. The Rob Clow one is probably one of the best ones in here, but, uh, and I've said this in all my classes this week, it's the longest, so you don't need every single detail from it. In fact, if you use the Rob Clow, the two best parts of it are the one section where he talks about perfect example and how Porcelino wrote it and Porcelino explains that in detail. In fact, if you want to use this article, I would say use your browser's find or you know, search function when you go to that interview and just type in perfect example, and you're going to see where that section of the, of the interview is. There's also some good stuff in the Rob Clow about his uh, you know, fandom, you know, his, his being a huge fan of the Bears and the Cubs uh, and the Bulls. So it's a, there's some other Chicago references in that, particularly about how when he was a kid, he would spend so much time with his dad watching Bears games on, on television, especially on Sunday or, you know, on Monday night football. So there's some interesting family history there too. A little bit about his history as an artist, but again, it's a great interview, but it's a very long interview and you're not responsible for the whole thing. You'd really have to zero in on, on the part that you find most interesting uh, in that one. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, the Laura Galbraith one uh, is, is much shorter, but it's got a lot of really good material. So it's easy to read it quickly. Um, you know, it's nowhere near as long as this Rob Clow, but the Galbraith one is all about his Buddhism. When he got into his twenties, he was, again, was looking for meaning and purpose in his life. And he turned to Zen, uh, Zen Buddhism specifically as a practice, as a spiritual practice, as a meditation practice. And so he, he talks in a lot of detail in that interview about that. And that's why towards the end of the book, particularly in the grass cutting scene, uh, towards the end where he's finally trying to break out and, and he's finding his way into, into happiness and, and confidence little by little. Um, he throws in some ideas there that are very Buddhist in nature. And I'm not a Buddhist myself. So I, I, I say that because I know I've had other students that did topics on this where they've, they've sort of analyzed uh, more the end of the book as having this kind of Zen-like quality to it. And that's in the Galbraith. He talks in great detail about that. Uh, now, to go back a little further in time, 2007 and Jason Heller's interview, which I think I may have shown you a little bit of in class uh, earlier in the week, that one is about the musical roots, the punk rock, the classic rock, his, his, own, mu his own music. It's a lot about his philosophy, not just as a musician, but as an artist, as a writer, as a, as a publisher. And so there's some interesting material in that. Also, not too long of an interview. And some of it also even focuses on his time growing up in, in the area here and going to Hoffman Estates uh, High School. So there's interesting material in that one. And then these last two are, are articles I've published. And I include these 
partly because, you know, I, I'm critiquing and grading your writing all semester. So if you're curious to see how I write for better or worse, you can you can take a look at it. One of these articles is from 2011. And this first one that I published 10 years ago in the uh, journal International Journal of Comic Art um, is focused on the mental health issues. Uh, not the whole thing. Half of it is about a different artist named Carrie McNinch, uh, whose style is similar to Porcelino's. But the first half of the article is all about this, uh, what's called a dissociation or dissociative disorder, which can result again, if, if you're under a lot of pressure, a lot of stress, and your, your mind is also almost trying to get you to, trying to get, help you escape from it. So the reason I wrote that article is when I was first teaching this book over a decade ago now, um, I wanted to learn more about it. So I thought the best way for me to learn more about the book was to write something about it. And so that was my first attempt to do it. And I focused again more on the mental health issues, so if that sounds interesting, I'd recommend that one. I don't know if it's the best piece I've ever written or published. I think it's wordier than it needs to be and much longer than it needs to be, but it might have some material in it that you, you, know, you find interesting. Of the two of them, I'm, I honestly am more proud of this recent one from two years ago, because it's, um, it's, it's, or actually it was published last year, but I wrote it uh, in 2020, uh, 2019, 2020. Um, and this one is about the music and it talks a little bit about the bands that he references, some of the musical elements of the book. So if you're interested in that, this one might be a good compliment to the Jason Heller. I think the Jason Heller is a better source on music, but I, I try to talk about that band, Who's Do, that he keeps referring to. And I go into a little bit of detail on that in that particular article. Um, so that's just an idea of some of the possible topics and sources that you have in here. So with that said, let me now jump into the outline. And I've got this up on Word. I'm also going to post this on Blackboard. Um, let me move this out of the way. Here's your outline. And again, this is a pretty standard outline for most academic college papers. I still use this as a basic format whenever I'm writing an article. The, the piece that I'm working on right now by an artist named Emil Gershwin um, I'm following this format. I'm doing some research on him now, and I'm trying to get my ideas together. Um, hoping to have a draft of that by by March. I don't know. I think my deadline's in April. I have to check with my editor actually on that. But anyway, this basic format is one that I learned when I was your age back in college. I probably actually I think I learned this probably back in high school, and it's a format that I found was very helpful even when I got to college and to grad school later on. So here's here's a basic format for a paper that has research in it. Um, has has sources and also has to include your opinion. So here's here's the the recommended structure for paper two. In your introduction, in the first few sentences, give me your summary, brief summary of perfect example. What is this book about? What parts of it did you find to be the most interesting? What themes were most interesting? Lead into your thesis. So what you know? What are some of the interesting uh, details from the book or even from class notes that you found were, were worthy of, of, of more consideration or thought. And as I mentioned uh, just a couple of minutes ago, that's your thesis. What did you think of Porcelino's book? And what did you learn from reading these additional research sources or the one source you, you're using about him? That's the question you want to answer in your thesis, your main idea at the end of the opening paragraph. Now, again, before I get to the rest of this, if you are having trouble coming up with a topic, with a thesis, just email me. We can talk over email. You can talk over Zoom, send me ideas. I'm happy to help you shape an idea if, if you're not sure what you want to write about. So then after you're done with your intro, paragraphs two and three of the paper, that's the first part of the middle, you know, the body of the paper. That's where you want to quote your source. This paper requires two direct quotations from your outside source, from one of those interviews or articles. That's the part of the paper where you want to quote from the articles respond to the quotations, explain to me as the reader why those facts that you found and you're citing are significant. So for example, if you were going to write about his Buddhism, that's the part of the paper where you would quote what he says to Laura Galbraith or what Galbraith says about him in that interview. And you could say, you know, in the interview, John Porcelino explains when he first got interested in Buddhism. He also explains what it means to him as to be a, an artist inspired by Zen practices. So that's going to give you at least two paragraphs because you're going to need two quotations. You want to write about them, respond to them, and think of yourself almost like a teacher. You know, you're trying to teach me more about these parts of your research 
uh, from the one interview that you looked at or you know the one article that you found were most interesting. So that really establishes a kind of foundation for the rest of the paper, because in order for your analysis and your opinions to be stronger, you want to show the reader that you've done your research, you know your stuff, you know, you know what you're talking about, you've done the research, you can quote from it, which then authorizes you because again you're the author uh, to go into paragraphs four and five that's where you pick your scene from the book or you know maybe one chapter at the most you're not responsible for writing about every scene on every page of the book uh, you know that's why i even said earlier if you just wanted to write about the last couple of pages in belmont harbor go for it do it because that's an interesting scene to to uh to analyze because it's so ambiguous and even Porcelino was, himself has never fully explained it, even in interviews. Um, so there's one, you know, if you wanted to talk more about the moment where Mark's grandfather, Harold, shows him that steel guitar. Great scene. You know, that's on page uh, 95 of the newer edition of the book where they go to Milwaukee. Great scene where you can talk about how music, um, to quote from the new U2 song, literally saved his life. I think you, we could say that in this section. Um, so great scene to talk about, particularly when he starts talking to Mark's grandfather. So again, you're not responsible for the whole book. Pick a very short section of it that you could focus on, the one you found most interesting, maybe the part that you found least interesting, you know, the, the part that you found was um, not as developed as you wanted to be. You don't have to praise the book when you're writing about it. You could critique it too, and that can make for an interesting paper, especially if there were sections of it that you think could have been done more effectively or that you didn't quite understand or you weren't sure about. I mean, this is a part of the paper where you can critique it and you need two quotations from Porcelino. But as I mentioned to a lot of my classes today too, and as you know, he's got a lot of panels that are very expressive, but there's no dialogue in them. I mean, there's very little happening in some of these. So treat that the same way you would if you were writing about a painting about a, a movie, you know, where you can describe the scene to me. And that's a kind of a quotation because you're telling me about a particular scene in the same way that you would, as I said, for like a film, if you were in a film studies class and they had you watching uh, uh, Pulp Fiction by T Quentin Tarantino and you had to, to uh, write about a scene, you might not quote the dialogue in the scene, but you would describe what was happening and then give your opinion on it. And of all the books you read this semester, this is the only one that's kind of like a film. We are going to do another uh, comic book or graphic novel or manga. It's a Japanese comic later in the semester, but it's much wordier than this. It doesn't have the kind of um, silent quality that this sometimes has. So just something to keep in mind. Um, so that's your analysis section of the paper. And then your conclusion. Sum up your main ideas. What did you, what were the ideas on Porcelino from your perspective that you most wanted to get across to me? as the reader in this paper. So that's your ending. So again, pretty straightforward. It's a three page paper. You can go over the three pages if you want to, uh, or if you find that you have more ideas that you want to put in there, but the three pages is the minimum. And with you know the two quotations from the source and you know your analysis of the book, I think you're going to find that writing three pages um, sh sh should be not interesting and maybe even fun because you can really sit down and think about what your opinion of this book is. Okay, so let me stop my screen share there. Uh, that's some of the stuff we covered. The other thing we covered, and I should have brought it out of my backpack before I started up this, the camera here. Um, also in class yesterday, we did listen to some of the music that Porcelino talks about in the book, particularly Husker Du, which is the band that he got the whole title from the book from. So I did bring my record player to class yesterday. I did play a couple songs or, uh, from this record. Um, so I'm going to do that again in our next class so that that way, those of you who weren't able to come because of the, the, the terrible weather conditions can kind of hear what this stuff sounds like. It really does form a kind of soundtrack to the book. Um, so I'll bring this back into our next class. And I might even try to find another, uh, if I have anything else on vinyl record um, that he refers to, I'll bring in. And the reason I'm using the record, aside from the fact that I have a turntable in my office, is there's so many scenes in the book where he's taken the record out of the sleeve, you know, and he's putting it on the, on the turntable. And I, I, I don't know, I think it's kind of fun to have that experience too, to sort of imagine what it was like for him to hear this stuff for the first time. Uh, back in the 1980s. This is another kind of reference, and it'll give you a better sense of what this music even sounds like if you are going to do that as a possible topic for this paper. So again, I'll, I'll also post uh, a link on Blackboard to, to, the, uh, to the songs that I did play in this so you can hear them before our next class on your own before we play them together in class, and you, we can talk a little bit about the lyrics 
Um, okay, so that's the major stuff from the class uh, from yesterday. If you have any other questions at all, like I said, please email me. I am happy to Zoom with you, particularly, you know, again, I'm filming this on Thursday afternoon before I pack up and head home uh, you know, from campus. And uh, Fridays for, are the day when I'm working at home. That's my grading day. I'm not on campus. I don't teach any classes on Fridays because uh, that's the day where I'm either writing my own stuff or doing research or I'm grading your papers. I kind of do both. I do a little grading and I do a little bit of my own writing on Fridays, which means in the afternoon, typically on Fridays, um, I usually don't have faculty meetings, so I can certainly meet with you briefly on Zoom and we can go through paper topics and ideas. So reach out to me if you want to do that. Um, so that's it. You know, like I said, um, thanks again, everybody, for uh, like getting in touch with me yesterday. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe. Um, hopefully, we won't get any more snow this weekend. Because, just speaking personally, I shoveled enough snow last night after I got home from work, and then my back is still kind of hurting today. And I, I think I got very slight. I don't know if it was frostbite, but my, my joints are, are feeling a little uh, creaky today because I didn't have the right gloves on when I was shoveling when I got home yesterday. Didn't have my uh, thermal gloves on. Uh, so anyway, I hope we don't get any more snow this weekend. Uh, have a nice, uh, nice weekend. I'll see you in the next class and please email with any questions. Talk to you later.